What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today what we're going to I'm overexposed. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video of Surreal Entertainment. My name is Robbie if you guys don't know. Today we're working on the FRS once again with another project. So what we're doing today is wait until the car passed by because I know you guys can hear it. What we're doing today is changing out those gay speakers that are placed in this car for no reason. They should have just better off not even put speakers in this car. They're the worst thing ever made. The car, well the people who ever made this car didn't even put any time into the so sound system of this car whatsoever. Now this is a 2013 model. I hear that after the 2013 they did start putting up a little bit better speakers and a little bit better sound system inside the cars. So I'm happy to hear that. But in this case we didn't get that. We got the worst freaking system ever. You can't even play a song without like trying to bang your head through the window. So what we're doing today is replacing that. We're not going with the super expensive $1,500 where everybody's doing that stupid upgrade that comes in a whole package. Yeah, I know, yeah, it's good. It's probably gonna be amazing sound, but that's not what we're here for. We're doing it in a budget way, in a better way, I would say. And that rhymed, I should make a song. Budget way, better way, yay, yay, yay. <laughs> Anyways, we're putting inside Hulk audio speakers. Now we're using a 4 inch and a 6.5 inch speakers. Now there's a lot of places online that you're going to try to find out what kind of speakers in your car and all this kind of bull stuff. Different places, different stuff, different information. So we don't know exactly the information that we got is actually correct as well so we're going to find out today. We're supposed to have 6.5s in the doors. We're supposed to have 3.5 to 4 inch on the top where your window is, where the little tweeter is, and there we're supposed to have 3.5s also on the back panels of the actual car. How accurate that is, we'll find out today. But what we have here is 4 inch bulk audio speakers, uh, the model number on these ones are DB402, and then we have two pairs of those 4 inch ones, because we need two for the back, two for the front window. And then we have 6.5 here. The part number is DB652, and I'll have links in the description as well so you guys can purchase the same exact speakers that I got today if you want to put that in your car. These cost me about two pairs of these 4 inch and one pair of these 6.5 cost me 150 bucks from Fry's Electronics. If you go to any other store, just a pair of these 4 inch ones are 80 bucks. So it's a great deal, we make the car sound much better. We're not putting subwoofer yet because we're going to make actual custom subwoofer box just like as I did on my Mazda Speed. I don't know if I made a video yet, but like I said, we're, we'll make one for this one. All right, boys. So first things first, what we need to do is we're gonna do. We're doing the passenger side first, then we're gonna do the driver's side. What we're gonna do is pop off this clip here in the top left corner. I'm gonna start with the door first, of course. This is the easiest thing. Get that clip out of there. Now I'm using a screwdriver. Don't use screwdrivers whatsoever. You're supposed to use clip poppers or anything like that, so you don't scratch up your car. I'm a professional, so I'm using screwdrivers. That said, next thing, after you pop that clip right here, you need to take off this silver trim around your car. Um, best way is to kind of like pry it from here, like this. And nothing happens. There you go. Give it a little bit of force. Two hours later. Got it out. Next, we have two screws inside here. As you guys can see, one here, one on top. You don't want to remove those. Right. Next, we have here where your door handle is and stuff, or door opener. There's a small little notch where you can put a screw, small screwdriver so you can pop that little lid off, and there's going to be a screw under there as well. You need to remove that. And it opens up like that. And you get your Phillips and you unscrew that one as well. Cool. Now from this point on the door should be pretty much free from everything. You can check around just in case there's more clips but there isn't. So I'm telling you that so you know. What you do now is pretty much kind of yank on this backwards. Um, don't be afraid to put a little bit of pressure so that's what I'm going to do. And then we're going to pull up. I'll show you guys how that's done right now. 
and I always try to start from the outside over here, the outside corner where I'm at. Try to use a screwdriver or some pry tool so you can pry a little bit. Two hours later. Okay, I'm getting somewhere. You gotta put quite a bit of pressure, so. Yeah. There you go. So try to put a little bit of pressure on there. Don't be afraid. It's gonna be a little bit hard to get, especially if it's the first time popping it off. Get it popped out as much as you can. When you start feeling pretty loose here, that but well, you can do that that tells you that it's already freed from all the clips and what you do is you lift up but don't pull it all the way out because your switches are still connected you don't want to rip off all the stuff from your switches so what we're gonna do is pull it up and make sure we disconnect the, the door opener and then all of the little connectors here as well like that All right guys, so there you have it. This is the door. There's your speaker that you're gonna be changing out. <clears throat> this does look like a 6.5, so pretty happy about that. Um, these are the two uh, little pulleys that you have to uh, disconnect. Um, green's on the bottom, white's on top. So just make sure you get those right when you pull them back in after that. And uh, that looks sounds good. This is where if you have any extra like stuff that's loose on the door, this is where you would want to put like let's say some tape or something like that's dentoning and stuff so you don't get rattles and stuff basically from your speakers. The new speakers probably going to be powerful and stuff so when they hit stuff is going to rattle. So if there's anything loose like these cables or anything like this, this probably is going to knock. You can see how this is knocking. So it's probably going to knock so you want to be able to like insulate this as much as you can in order for your sound dentoning to be good and quality sound. All right. I'm going to go ahead now and remove this clip here for the speaker. Always examine your clips how they're actually connected so you don't break something. That. And here's your speaker. Out. It connected from the top here so that's that. This is a stock looking speaker to me. It's a looks like it's two ohms, China. I don't know. This is what I hate about the FRSs or anything like that because the speakers that they come with, they're built in with a stupid plastic housing. The speaker, see now this speaker here, it's non removable from the housing. Like it kind of sucks. So usually what people do when they actually replace their speakers, you have to buy yourself an adapter kit which will come basically this plastic piece without the speaker inside and then the connector will be somewhere on the plastic piece it will be just direct connected now I mean I'm not gonna spend the extra sixty dollars or so to get like stupid mounts like this so what I'm gonna do is actually modify this for a new speaker to fit and I'll show you guys how that's done right now alright so as I explained to you earlier in the car that this whole speaker comes so one assembled together with the housing so what we have to do is separate the speaker from the actual housing how we're gonna do that is you can see the glue right here there's glue in a corner so I'll, I'll, I'll stand from in. that side I'll zoom in. I can see you go ahead so there's glue right here yep there's glue over there yes. and then you have to break these clips as well are we gonna cut them as close you as might not need there? to dip oh, you do you know, actually the, you do I see it yeah yeah, yeah yeah you're right you're right so you're gonna have to break these five clips or whatever and then after that separate the, the speaker from the glue and it should pop right out you can just work uh and see he has, he has he got a knife in there you can see the glue right there going in and you can see how it's separating so I think we need to do it first is break those clips because they ain't gonna let you uh, do as separate. we say not as we do cut away from you <laughs> and my my old speaker we're gonna probably need to keep this around just to keep it nice yeah, and sealed, uh, sealed yeah. Yeah, but the other one already has this, so I'll see if I can peel that off. You run that, you can keep that and put that on the new speakers that we have down there, maybe, so it can insulate. We'll see if it fits though. If it doesn't, then screw it. But then the next thing you want to do is cut the speaker itself off.
Alright, so. Cones out. called uh, Speaker Ripperino. Rest in peace. It's called Fire TJ Punk. <laughs> no, Fire Danny Courtney. Fire TJ for hiring Danny Courtney. Dude, I believe this is um, reinforced carbon. Fiberglass reinforced. Yeah. Glass fiber 20. 20% 20 fiberglass reinforced. Strong ship, but you gotta be careful because it can be brittle. You see? Just cracks. Yeah, that's why people cut it off with the thing, with the wheel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. So on the back, you can just snap these two little supports on both sides. That's all it is, and then it'll snap off. Actually cracked already. Yeah. That'll also clip those off. We will solder the new speaker to this so it OEM plugs in. Yep. <laughs> That'll also clip those off. We will solder the new speaker to this so it OEM plugs in. Yep. <laughs> so cut it off with the little wheel you have. Not the little wheel, but what do you call it? With, uh... Just need a with the little saw that we cut up my bumper with. It'll crack the uh, fiberglass saw will stick and it'll crack it. Boom. Easy piece. Speaker out! Even the magnet's it, weak. It, it, Just like the it horsepower. Cannot be, it cannot <laughs> even be a shop magnet. No. Alright, we'll just slowly, I'll just slowly chip with those right now real quick. There you go. Boom. Oh, look at that. Perfecto. So that's one. Let's get it flush. Right, I'm getting it from here. Boom. Two. Be careful because like I said, this is reinforced fiberglass so it will chip and and do what it's doing right now basically. So make sure you're not putting too much force on the actual ring because it will break it off and then... Yeah, you don't want any off. force on it. Let's see if it will fit. Yeah, let's see how good this is. These are a new 6.5 pole. Match. Bam -bam. Match it up. 6.5 baby, let's go. What we're gonna do is probably drill a couple holes so we can mount it onto the actual thing as well with some screws. And you can see it. And we're good. It meets up close. But what we'll probably do is align it like this. Yeah, and just put some wiring. Yeah, so so the so wiring's it has a little not. Bit of a flex too. Because I don't feel comfortable with it being that close. That's, That's short. Yeah, yeah, it's too close. Guys, if you wanted to go, if you want a dyno mat and go super cheap, literally it's been tested over and over. Home Depot sells it as crazy as it sounds. It's um. It's a one-sided sticky with silver backing with just like this That's dyno I have mat. my other car, dude. It's so cheap. Yeah, it's, it's insulating, roof, uh, roof insulation or whatever, yeah, dude. Yeah, insulating something. And it works, dude. It works. You get so much of it for, for a quarter of the cost of... So, that's true to an extent. It helps a lot more than nothing. It, yeah, definitely And you helps. don't spend a thousand bucks on, you know, what 50 it, square feet. <laughs> what he's explaining is that I have the same thing in my other Mazda, the same thing he explained from Home Depot. Yes, it does reflect sound but it doesn't kill rattles. We'll use Dynomat, the reason why it's heavy is because it grabs the sound and it dentons it. Did, did you get from Home Depot? It will not, you know, denton the sound like the rattles or anything like that. What it would do it is just reflect the sound to point in a direction. Well, it dentons the, the reverberating sounds off of body panels because yeah, you're just... trying to hit 40 hertz on, on a speaker but you're getting 40 and 60 and 90 and yeah. 112 and whatever else your metal is vibrating to. So basically what it is, just a cheaper kind of a dynamat, you know, it's to save you money. That's the budget way. Now we're not putting no dynamat in this car. Um, we're just trying to make it a little bit better. Like I said, the sub on the back is going to be the one that's going to be mostly insulated in the trunk. So we're not doing the sub today. We're just changing out the speakers to make them better. And then, oh God, it's just coming apart from the sun, dude. You might be asking yourself, wow, they know how to install speakers? Fuck yeah we do! <laughs> <laughs> We've done quite a bit of our own cars to know what we're doing on this kind of stuff. We're not so. pros, but... But yeah, so this little hole there in the door, right there, where I'm pointing at, we're gonna fill it up with, um, okay, so you can go to Michael's and get yourself uh, Dude, called Poly too much, Fill. too much to fill the door. You don't, don't need care. to, don't fill the door. You're I'm not gonna, filling the whole door, I'm putting a little bit. It's gonna slide right back. Nah, well, Dude, it's useless. I'll put some glue on there. I'm telling you, it's useless. 
you're gonna regret it. I'm poly filling the, the crap out of the door. If it lights on fire, it lights on fire. That's what's happening. What we're doing now is we're gonna figure out how to attach the speaker. I'll put you guys on the time lapse. See you in a second. Watch out! The floor is lava! Alright guys, so what we have here is we figured out how to mount this to the actual housing of of the car. What we did was you explain. So there's this lip right here. The lip that the original speaker rides on. You could see the where the glue was. So these pokes have a hole you can actually see through the holes that they match right up to right where that lip is. So I just marked four mountain spots. And we used, through, we and used much smaller. Uh, we pre-drilled it and used a, a screw just big enough to basically mount something into that hole so that it, we can reduce the risk of cracking. Yeah, because this is As reinforced tell, fiberglass, so. It's on there, it's on there tight. All the bolts are tight. It's not Don't moving. yank, don't yank, because it's on the lip, so yeah. Next thing we will do is Silicone the edge right here nice and neat all the way around and She will be ready to be slapped back in the car. All right guys, so I just finished up here Gluing we're not gluing, but we're gonna use silicone at first on RTV, but that's not gonna happen So what we did was we used hot glue gun and went all the way around the whole seam there where the, sp the speaker attaches to the little housing and it's good to go the screws are on there as well, so the reason why we did the the glue was to insulate it and make sure the sound projects forward all the time and also um, to strengthen the rigidity of it just in case those screws that we put on into that fiberglass thingy here, um, ABS, fiberglass, wannabe stuff, uh, fail. So now it's on there for good for good and uh, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start soldering these two connectors there. But um, that's going to happen after I pull all the other speakers. So let's go and pull the rest of the speakers and get them all mounted up into the sections where they need to be. Then we'll do the soldering all at once. Okay, so we need to remove the speakers from the door panels, which are one there and uh, one here. So what we need to do is this whole back panel here needs to come out. In order for that to come out, this seat has to come out. And to do that, you have this screw take that one out and it's going to be able to be lifted up. You still won't be able to pull the seat out. The only thing you would have to do is push down here like this really hard down and then out. And I'll go ahead and do that right now and that's how the seat's going to come out. Right, now that the seat is out there is a clip down there that needs to be removed and I think pretty much everything else is just clips that are within it. So we're going to take out this door trim first here. That's going to come out first as you guys can see here. Then, I think I have to remove this. I don't. It doesn't look like I have to remove this molding. So I'm just going to have to yank on it and see if it'll come out. So we went ahead and pretty much disconnected it from everywhere here. It kind of just pops off. So that's good and happy. Um, but down here is not happy. So what we need to do is remove this one and this clip here, and I think then it'll come out. Alright, boys, there you have it. So this is what it looks like once you take out the panel. A little bit of fiddling, a little bit of moving the seat back and forth. But we got it out, nice and easy. No clips were broken, so that's good. And here's that ugly speaker here that needs to be removed. That does look like a 3.5. Oi, this guy over there. So let's hope that, um, you know, the new speaker that we have that's a 4 inch is going to fit in there. And we're going to go ahead and do that. But first, we're going to take this guy out. Alright guys, already removed that little speaker, we're going to go ahead and do the front now. Now you have speakers in here as well, you have one inch little, what do you call it, tweeter, and then 3.5 should be the same same size speaker that's on the back. So this little cover comes off, what you're going to have to do is pry here with a pry tool or something like that and that'll pop right up. And then just probably going to be some screws in there so we can remove. So I'll show you guys what's up real quick once I remove this cover. Alright guys, that come out fairly easy. Um, there's just one clip that holds this uh, little tweeter. And this is it right here, a little tweeter. 
Now I'm not going to be replacing this guy because I know replacing this kind of is a pain in the butt because this is what powers these speakers. So I'm not replacing this boy um, since it's just a little tweeter. So whatever. Maybe in the future I'm replacing that little speaker there. And there's two screws on there that's holding it looks like. I'm pretty sure it's connected on the bottom as well. So first things first, remove the little two screws and then get it out. All right guys, so there you have it. All the speakers are out. These are the two rears. That one and that one are the rears. That one obviously is the second uh, door panel one. That's a 6.5. The rears are 3.5s and the fronts in your windshield are 3.5s as well. So that's how you know what size your speakers are. Now we're gonna try to fit the four inch onto that 3.5 little mount. Let's hope it works. We'll see how that goes. I'm going to put you guys in the time lapse. All right, guys, hopefully you got that clip of the time lapse. I'm not sure if you did because my camera died in the middle of actually rendering the clip. So if you didn't get that clip of the time lapse, sorry about that. But I'll just briefly explain real quick on video what I just did. So what I did here was basically I removed uh, the speaker, which is this guy that's coming from the windshield side, and I disattached it from the actual little, um, you know, housing of it. And then there's two wires that hold it here. You need to, uh, you're gonna need to disassemble those right there. And then let's see here, what we're we gonna do here. This is how it looks when you take them all apart. And what you need to do from that point on is not use this at all, especially if you're using the speakers that I got, the same ones, um, because this is not going to fit in there, that's, that's one. Two, you could have broken the clips just like you did on the other one and put it in there. There's no point for that because the speaker is actually exactly tall enough, this one specifically, to fit inside the, the little housing of the, of the window there. So. I'm just gonna place the speaker just like this because this doesn't do much anyways. So I'm just gonna place the speaker just like this and use the little connector, this one here, that used to be on here. See how it is here? Just use that connector, solder it to the speaker here and then just directly plug it into the car. So that's what I'm gonna do now. All right guys, so we're fully assembled on speaker wise, out with the old, in with the new these are the front uh, speakers that go in the windshield as you guys can see here they're soldered nicely in there um, the plug has a brown and a black wire the brown goes to plus the black goes to minus um, same thing with the other one there these are the ones that go on the rear quarter panel um, I screwed them in with uh, with new bolts and stuff because the locations of previous ones were here and here and they were not enough so basically what we, gonna, we, what we did was we had to modify this aluminum here as you guys can see a little bit in order for the speaker to fit in as you guys can see they're cut I've made marks where I needed to cut and then I cut it looks a little bunky but hey it works the speaker fit through and uh, that's soldered in the same manner the red goes to the positive and I think the black one here goes to the negative so that's good to go and it's in there nicely uh, same thing with this one did the same exact thing on this side as well and then uh, these guys are the big ones these are supposedly your woofers or whatever you want to call them the ones that are in the door 6.5 inch um, they're nicely sealed with uh, with hot glue gun and uh, they're nicely soldered as well in there as well beautiful good to go time to assemble it and put the car back together uh, I'm not going to pretty much show you that because that's the same thing just in reverse order so again these speakers are 4 inch so I got two pairs of 4's and then a 6.5 inch uh, pair of those as well in the car though they're supposed to be three and a halfs so if you want to save your time cutting some brackets and stuff like that in order for for these speakers to fit in, in the rear quarter panels and also in the front, then get yourself 3.5s. That way you have no issue. But if you want to get the speakers I got, I have the links in the description as well. Um, I think bigger is better. What do you say bro? Bigger is better? He said yep, he agrees, he likes bigger. So. That's it, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the car now and then uh, we're gonna do a test and hopefully everything works perfect. All right guys, so finally finished up. Um, 
it looks amazing and everything came out great. Um, the speakers fit in perfect. Um, I love them. There's a little bit of fiddling you have to do in order to fit them in there nicely because of course we got a little bit bigger speakers. But after that's all done, they're really good. So I'm gonna show you guys real quick that I do work real quick. They're inside the car now. This and also features tons of recordings that we did. The highs and the lows are amazing as well. In the desert, kind of like finding old buckets in the bathtub. I'm really loving it. You guys can hear. They all sound really good. So I don't know how good you guys can hear it, but um, this is going through the same microphone of the car. Uh, I mean, of the of the camera that, that's on the camera right now. So I mean, the difference is quite large. It's like pretty much I would say 70 to 80 percent difference from the stock speakers and these. There is no distortion anymore. Um, there's no rattles anymore and stuff like that as well. It's much more cleaner and way just way better quality sound. So that said, I'm gonna end the video here. Um, stay tuned for the next video, which is gonna be probably on the subwoofer that we're gonna be installing in the back and. Um, I don't know, that's about it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys enjoyed the FRS videos and stuff. We have one more car that's gonna be a new project as well going on on this channel as well. So that's gonna be a little bit later on uh, on the channel. And I hope you guys enjoyed these videos and stuff. So smash the thumbs up. Please leave me a comment below so I can answer some questions and stuff if you guys have. Other than that, don't forget to grab yourself a hat. Down in the, in the description is the link. It's surrealtunermerch.com. So again, we have hats, shirts for different cars and all that kind of stuff. So go ahead and check those out. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one. And don't forget, what's behind you doesn't matter.